Hey guys, it's Will here. We're coming at you with another video. Uh, got a big special order in, so I thought I'd take a look at that because I probably see this online. But we're going to start with some smaller stuff first, then we'll make to the big grand release, reveal, whatever. First things first is I got myself the new Flames of War starter set for the Americans. Try to hold it as still as I can, sorry. Got shaky hands. But this box here. Start with this. We have the walls of our Morelord games, the stone walls. So this is just parts of it. And bridge. Next, Bruin Walker, M M USA, sort of Bruin Walker, M eight A four. This is for my conflict army. I'm going to use it for my Russians and for my Americans. It does come with an extra barrel. Uh, the guns you can uh, put on or off if you want. Uh, there's a version of this with like auto cannons or stuff on the side. It does come with a box. Comes in that box, there it is. And of course the instruction manuals on the back. It didn't come with the guy in the in the command spot, which I kind of wish it did. Have some dudes sitting on there. That'd be kind of cool. But it does not. If you'll go there. Kitty. Next off is we have our Crusader 1 Mark II slash Mark II. I built it as the 1, but you can easily just proxy it. It does come with the hatch to replace this so that you can have uh, have the flat hatch to make the Mark II. I believe they are making this into plastic. There's talks about them removing a bunch of their resin kits. Because they got rid of the ability for horses to... So horses can't draw all toes anymore. So you have to use tractors for your heavy stuff. So, a little dude riding inside. Uh, you can glue... This does come off separate, so if you want to put stuff in there, like a little AA gun or uh, some dudes or boxes, crate you can. There is a roof that does go on top of this. It's metal. But I have the... I have the roof off because I'm going to paint everything inside and then glue it on. So we have our tractor. The British have slash Canadians own all the Commonwealth. We have the Bofors anti-air gun. It's really good. I'd highly recommend this gun for anyone playing non-American Russian allies. Or even some sort of Axis force that wants to run it. Uh, this gun's really good. It's got, for point costs, it's anti-air, 360 turret, once it's set up you don't need to move it, decent range, it's got gun shield, it can 10 armor, again, and it's cheap. And you can recruit, because I, take, I believe it takes an artillery slot. So if the dudes die on it, you can replace it, replace dudes. So it's pretty good all-around gun. Then, last but not least, the main part of this video, as I move this gun over to the side here. Anywho, so this is the mouse. This is a the super behemoth tank made by the Germans at the last ditch effort of the war. Didn't see didn't see use it would have actually potentially maybe have helped if anything it would have moved itself into the front line broke down and become a mobile like basically command bunker these things but again germans spent too much time trying to make things instead of just updating things like the americans and the british did in my opinion and they should have they should have attempted to make new things like making the, the panther was pretty decent the tiger was really good 
But if they would have stopped there and kind of like all the metal that they wasted on this or on the Gustav cannons or all that and pushed it to just update and create more Panzer IVs and Panthers and Tigers would have had a better chance. But we don't get cool funky things like this, like this piece of history. The camera doesn't do it justice. It makes it look fat, like smooshed. This thing is long. So here's like my hand next to this thing. Look at that. And so this turret is one chunk. The, the barrel is as long as my pointer finger. And it's also sitting inside some bit. So here we go. Try to focus it in. So here's the turret. So you got yourself a gigantic cannon that doesn't lose, doesn't get any minuses for shooting long range. I think it has like a plus seven or an eight. Then it's coaxled with a light howitzer because the, the tank couldn't shoot HE and AP because of how large the rounds were and how it was bored. So they needed a separate one. Then in this little slot right here, if I can zoom it right there, was theorized that there was an MMG in there or somewhere else on this thing. I th think, yeah, I believe that's where it would be. There was a MMG in there as a coaxial also. Uh, this thing, they don't have it modeled on here unless that's where I'm looking at here at this top hole. Come on, at this top hole here. But this tank was supposed to, I think it's what this is it's in here. But, um, Somewhere around here, there's a dedicated, because the tank was so large, like if this thing was true scale, it would be twice the size. Like it would be the size of anyone who's played uh, Warhammer, how like the scaling works on that. A Bane Blade is basically, the, a Bane Blade is a double, like double wide bus, like mouse. It's two mouses put together. If you guys want a really good video on it, the Chieftain does one about it. Uh, to scale, he's my height. He's 6'5", so uh, you'll see the hugeness of this thing. So it had a anti-tank gun. Uh, at first, the very first model, the one that they recovered, had it so it was fixed. I think you can lean it a bit. Probably the guys would have like, loosen the screws so they could rotate it a bit. But as the plane would, would dive over and be almost over it before it let the bomb off, you had to time it perfectly to shoot this like shotgun round of flak at it. But here we go, here's the body of this beast. This is all one chunk of resin. The barrel is resin uh, that you glue on separately. And the hatch here, which you can have open, this was the main hatch for both, like everyone to go in. It was large enough that you could fit um, tools and parts, almost even inch, like two people side by side can get in it. Uh, your headlights, which are basically just mini spotlights on this damn thing. Of course, your guards, your exhausts. It is, the mouse was just this, even with it being a prototype that they found, the mouse was just literally going to be a big brick of metal. Um, for detailing, though, they didn't do that bad. For, for detail, they didn't do too bad. There's They got the rivets where the, the things would go. They got the weld lines in there. Um, they even do on the inside here, they even do the road wheels because this was like triple bogey, whatever. I would have rather it be plastic and have me build it and do the bogeys, maybe have some interior stuff, have the gun breach, at least have it go up and down. I can do some damage to it, make the damaged one that they found or even make the flak version out of it for like uh, Conflict 47, like as a special mission. This is solid, just solid resin. Like, it is literally a chunk. Chunk of resin. Uh, everything was pre-molded. Uh, if you do buy this, I do recommend it, especially when they have their sales. They do go they do go in and out of, like, order, like, uh, stock quickly. Because I think they only make a few, which, to be fair, they use so much resin on these that the turret uses, like, their fine cast resin. So it's, like, this weird great like light gray cement looking color and then the uh base of the body because it's not very detailed and it's just like for lightness or denseness or something or maybe durability is like a wet clay 
resin color. Uh, so, uh, so let's kind of go over the rules, I guess. So at for inexperienced, and we'll go from inexperience up. So inexperienced, regular veteran. I'll just say the point costs: four, 464, 580, 696. So pretty cheap for what this thing will do. And here's what it does. It is a one turret mounted super heavy anti-tank gun with coaxial light howitzer and one pintle mounted MMG on the turret. It is a super heavy tank at 11 plus damage value, so that's the amount required to roll to hurt it when you do a damage test. So just like in Warhammer where you roll to hit, roll to wound. Uh, it's got Tiger Fear, Slow. Mobile Fortress to fulfill its role as a breakthrough tank, which is more like a breakdown tank and uh, turn into a fortification. Uh, the mouse had extremely advanced heavy armor for its period. Yes, this thing was literally the epitome of I am tank. So, there's no penetration modifier for hitting the mouse from the top or the sides. And if you do shoot it in the butt, it is only a plus one because, again, you have the uh, oil tank. So, and then we got Gotterdammerung. Sorry if I butcher that. Or damn or ring. As the mouse would have only seen it action in the last days of Third Reich and probably suffered from technical issues and supply shortages, yes. Roll the die every time the vehicle completes a move. So, that's if this thing moves. If you deploy right, you don't need this thing to move. Um, so, this is what you do you gotta roll a d6 uh, on a 1 and a 2. Um, on a 1, it's broken down and it's out of fuel. The vehicle is immobilized for the rest of the game. Again, you don't really need to move. Uh, two is you can do it has one more turn. It has one more move left in it, and then it's just immobilized. Three plus, it's okay. So and then you just roll again. Then this is where its gun talks about uh, the next rules about how its gun doesn't suffer the minus one for being long range and still has a seven up full damage bonus. And its light howitzer is a two inch he or a four inch smoke uh, and because again it is coaxial you can only shoot one or the other you can't shoot both and that is that for this uh, so we got for our next projects i got these these walls to finish i got the other walls that i showed in the last video which will be in the playlist on there and i'm starting the pond of water that's in one of the, the books. I'm building a table based off the Pegasus Bridge starter box and the Market Garden um, campaign book. So if you guys want to kind of see what I'm building uh, and you guys have those books or you've picked up the box or think you're thinking about picking up the box, that's what I'm doing. If you guys want to see what's in the box and my opinions on it, uh, my Pegasus Bridge playlist has all that stuff in there. I'll be posting stuff on Instagram and Twitter also. My socials will be in links, or if you click my banner on YouTube, it'll be there too. So with that, I think that is actually the end of this video now. For those, see you guys later.